safe driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm back out in the driveway in the cold again, bizarrely in March, with the Crown Victoria, which has been beating me quite senseless with its parking brake. You saw it a week or two ago when I was trying to get the parking brake cables replaced on this thing. Uh, the parking shoes, not a problem. Parking brake cables, problem. I had to leave it when I could not get those cables to meet up where they were meant to be going. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a lot of bad weather and I've had a fair bit of work on, so I've not been able to get back out into the driveway to carry on and get it sorted out. This is really frustrating because I love driving this thing. Um, I was actually contemplating getting a mobile mechanic to come around and do it, but I wanted to have one more crack at it before I kind of admitted defeat. Um, and today is that crack, and if I can't get it done today, I am going to get uh, someone to come around and look at it because I just don't want it be sitting here like a giant paperweight in the way. I want to be driving the thing, so I can get things jacked up, have another look at it with fresh eyes, fresh cup of tea, and see what we can do. Right, let's get this thing in the air. Okay, so looking at this with fresh eyes, honestly, it's not really helping that much. So, as a few people commented on the previous video, I had run this cable, which goes to this parking brake just here, underneath this trailing arm. It should go over the top, but I don't think it really makes any difference in terms of the actual length of it, it's just more for clearance. But we've got this hooked on the bottom here. When that pulls tight, that will go through that slot there. I think I should not have connected the other arm, uh, the cable I should say, up at this point because that is now causing me grief. So I'm going to disconnect that in a moment. That is this old rusty item here. Because uh, that is coming along here and is that much too short. So let's free that off over there and see what I can do. Okay. There's a couple of little arms that pop out the side of this bit. To squeeze them in, then you can push this back out again. That's how you meant to disassemble the old one as it goes. I'd actually kind of forgotten I'd seen this, uh, this tip online on an American YouTube channel where we've got these clamps which stick out in every which direction at once. Get yourself a hose clamp, crank it on there, and that'll compress all the fingers at once. Could have done with a smaller hose. Ow! Small hose clamp really, but all I had. Ow, all I had. Ow. Right, that's partially pulled through, I think. Slacken off a touch. There we go. Oh, man alive. So fitting that then, at that point earlier on. But a massive pain in the butt for me later on. Right, okay, so that is now no longer linked to the other cable. So in theory, I should... Oh, I have got enough room now. Oh, saints be praised and all that kind of stuff. It actually reaches. It doesn't go in because it's <laughs> all swollen up and overused, but when well, overused, um, just too big basically. Which means, oh god damn it, I'm gonna have to. Oh yeah, it's going in. <sighs> Trying to do that, cutting my hand to pieces. There we go, it's in, it's in, it's slack as anything, but it's in. Fantastic, right. Well, that's good. That means the driver's side is effectively done. So that is now all hooked in. Problem is, of course, I've now got to figure out how to make this all go across the other side of the car <laughs> and not be uh, rubbish. Right, OK, let's figure this one out. OK, so this rotten old one goes across there. So let's get a socket on there. Right, so now what we need to do is get this thing linked across the back axle so this is actually surprisingly tight in terms of tightness and in terms of uh, axis so we've got a 90 degree on a 3 8 socket onto 3 8 to 3 8 to half inch and she's in the impact very lightly indeed that's locked itself again yeah now I've loosened it with the impact I can now just wind it off slowly not the greatest access in the world has to be said Okay, that is now uh, unbolted just there. That clamp is free. It is merely clipped across the top of the differential, left and right hand sides just there. Uh, okay, this is uh, one surprisingly tight wheel nut from working on and off. Using it manually on the impact, using penetrating oil 
I don't know how this is so tight. I'm starting to think I'm actually winding the stud out of the wheel rather than winding the nut off the stud. Well, that's a new one. I actually had the uh, wheel stud just shear off just there. And I was working that back and forth for about 20 minutes, soaking it in penetrating oil, using the hand tool, using the impact, using a variety of everything to try and soften it off. And eventually when I put the thing back on the ground again to get some proper leverage on it with the hand tool, it just sheared off, which I kind of had a feeling it might do. I wonder if I could replace the entire wheel hub now. So I'm not sure how much needs to come off to replace these studs. So I'm going to crack on with, uh, well, keep on keeping on basically, taking the handbrake assembly apart. So we'll get that bit done at the very least and then figure out what we need to be replacing to replace that, which is not the best. Um, one thing that just was confusing me a little bit because I was taking this apart thinking, God, the axis isn't very good on this top bolt on the caliper. Can't get anything on the bottom one. Can't use a 10 mil spanner. And I thought, well, the other side wasn't that hard. But this isn't a mirror image on the passenger side, or the driver's side, because it's American. Um, the caliper's on the back. On this one, it's on the front. So basically got the same components and flipped them left to right. They've not done two separate items as far as I can tell, which is very interesting. Curious, huh? Anyway, Bulldog doing its bit down here, soaking in here to make this come undone easily. Although it is very, very soaked in grease and stuff. Get that soaked in as well, because that's gonna have to come off in a minute. Ah, oh, dear me too. I really wish I had remembered to order the rear shock absorbers because they need changing as well while I'm under here. Right, so this is how you fall out of love with a car. That 10 mil lower brake caliper um, bolt is not moving at all. I've given it a bit of penetrating oil from the Bulldog. I've given it some love taps with the hammer, but it's not moving and I really don't want to shear this off as well. So let's get in there with my old friend, the heat extraction tool. Really is, it's really is a dodgy bit of design by Ford here. There's just no access on the back of this with this trailing arm in the way. And you can't get such good force on this thing with a basic spanner. And of course, these are long old um, bolts. I'll show you quickly what I'm looking at. It's one of these. So the bit that's stuck is about six or seven centimeters away from where I'm putting the force. So. I really don't want to be putting a load of torque on the end of that and just shearing the bolt off because then we are really are nadger, don't we? So using this wands type of thing, uh, actually applying heat to the body that it's going into rather than to the end, just to the end, so we can try and free the thing off. This better not be a reverse thread, it'd be maddening if it is. I'm pretty certain it's not. <laughs> So I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute because I don't want to break it, but it's driving me absolutely mad. I might to go and get a better 10 mil, like a six pointed rather than a 12 pointed 10 mil spanner to go and battle this thing off. I think I've got some of those over in the barn. Uh, so meantime, I've gone back to doing the handbrake cable. And what I've figured is the way to get this uh, cable out of these clamps is to get a pair of uh, long nose pliers and uh, kind of pin carefully pinch it out, I managed to do it on the other side, but I was doing it right-handed with better access and not holding a GoPro. Um, so I'm not quite sure how well this will go, but we'll, I'll put the camera down. There we go. I think it's kind of working. There we go, it's free. Ah, well, that side came free easier than the other side. Just need to somehow, oh, I say somehow, I know exactly how to, um, free it off here. And then we've got this one out completely. I don't really want to go in with the uh, angle grinder again, really. That was a little bit much, to be honest. Right, so you can use a breaker bar, use that bolt there to lever it, and then that one can pop off there. You can get that free. Oops, hang on, let's put the camera down. You basically need three hands to do this kind of stuff. Narrate, work, and film. There we go. That is now effectively free. So all I need to do now is get that caliper off. <laughs> now I can put new cal shoes in there. Come on, get off there, you're so so. So this is the shipwreck that was the cable passing underneath the car. Actually not too bad on the uh, passenger side, uh, but over here, very, very crusty on this junction bit here, completely gone through the armor to the outer metal sheathing stuff. 
and this adjuster, this is the, uh, the tension adjuster part, is just crusted to nothing. Weighs an absolute ton that does. Right, okay, so following the route it was routed through previously, we've now got this other handbrake cable pushed into place. It's not tensioned up and that's, that's not pulled through there, simply because it's not connected at the other end yet. But everything is kind of in place at this point. So now we just have to figure out how to get this out. And then of course, what I need to replace to, to sort this, which is not a good situation. Well, now the fun bit begins because we're heading over to Rock Auto to order a single stud for 89p and a single lug nut for 50p and also getting in an electric mirror switch because that would be quite handy. I forgot that last time. I wonder how long this will take to arrive. Oh, come on. That's coming from a different location. That means it's going to be twice the price for delivery. Man, alive, that's annoying. Right, okay, so I haven't got quite as far as I'd hoped I would get with this particular very simple job, but at least I haven't had to call in a mechanic just yet, and we're not completely defeated, although we are semi-defeated for the next week or so, because that's how long it's going to take Rock Auto to ship over a new wheel stud and a new lug nut, which is massively frustrating. Um, in the meantime, though, I will keep on keeping on trying to get that brake caliper off because that is just beyond frustrating but the one thing I really don't want to do is the same thing happened to the lug nut and shear that off because then I really am in a proper world of hurt that's just going to devolve into cutting big chunks of the car off and replacing like half the rear axle on the carrier assembly and all that kind of stuff. But as it now stands I've managed to feed the brake cables from left to right and from front to back and they're all linked together apart from the actual springy bit joining in the middle which I'm going to have to separate that bracket from underneath. I'll be honest, I was in two minds as to whether to put this video out today, stopping where we've got to now, or leave it until we've done some more progress. But as it's going to be like a week until the other bits arrive, I figure we might as well put it out now, because otherwise it'll be just a ridiculously long gap between this part of progress and the last part of progress. Meantime, I've also ordered, finally, new electric mirror switch because that has never worked since I've had the car and I've also finally remembered to order a new pair of rear shock absorbers now the Ford Motorcraft uh, P71 police specific shocks are £23 each which is just insanely cheap this is the more expensive version because the standard ones were special and started from I think under $10 each uh, it's it's unthinkable how cheap it is to maintain an American car um, if you're in America, because here in the UK, shipping all that stuff has cost £27, which again isn't into the world, but still, if you're in the US, that's probably only going to be about $4 to ship it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed. And one final thing, because we are sitting in the V8 powered Ford. Oh, that noise is something else, not the pinging. That modular V8 just sounds so, so very good indeed. Oh, the spring was on top of the wipers. I'll get that in a second. Okay, well, thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode and join me again next time. Well, we won't be working on this one for a few days because waiting for parts to arrive and I've got to go and find some kind of six-sided spanner to try and free off that caliper. But anyway, see you again very soon indeed and thank you for watching. Take care, everybody, and goodbye. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, hit the Furious Driving Store. Good stuff. Bye.